are. I am really looking forward to telling you about the books that I'm hoping, wishing, dreaming to read in the month of February. Some are in honor of February still being wintry. Some are in honor of February having Valentine's Day in it. And the rest are for all of the book clubs and kind of reading projects that I am doing. And the first on the list is part of my booktuber uh, favorites project that very soon you will see that video. Um, and it is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. This is a book that Petra from Petra U has really made me want to read. I think it's got kind of this, um, this vibe I really want in winter, this, you know, folklore and whimsy, but some dark tones to it as well. I, and, but it sounds very character driven. I'm very drawn to it. So I'm going to try to read The Daughter of the Forest and hopefully I will be successful and then I'll have many more Juliet Morillier books to read. Um, I did read um, Heart's Blood a few years ago and didn't love it, so I thought I would try a different route with her. And then To Have and To Hoax by Martha Waters. This is a Regency romance and there is a couple that have separated, they were married, and so there's going to be a lot of baggage they have behind them. And I know there is some, like, I think the wife feigns illness. There's going to be a lot of humor, I get the sense. And um, Olive at a book, Olive, really made me want to pick this up. And I thought, what better month than the month of February with this really fetching cover? I'm really looking forward to that. The next one on my list is The Original Miss Honeyford by M.C. Beaton. Uh, so this is part of a whole series. I think it's the Love and Temptation series. And I read Miss Davenport's Christmas, which was part of this series. They're a series, but I'm pretty sure all of the books are kind of standalone. Um, but this is a Regency romance series. And I have just found the, you know, exact precise kind of romances that I like. I like either uh, the Susanna Kearsley, um, uh, Mary Stewart, Phyllis Whitney kind of line of romances, or it seems like I really love a good historical romance. Um, and Susanna Kearsley is a little bit of both, like mystery and romance and historical romance, but I digress. I'm really looking forward to picking another book up in this series. Miss Davenport's Christmas was just a delight from start to finish, and I loved the audiobook narrator, so I will definitely be sticking with the audiobook for this and looking forward to continuing on in this series. And I thought definitely because of Valentine's Day, that's what I'll be listening to in the, in the lead up to Valentine's Day and on Valentine's Day. Um, the next one is Sovereign by C.J. Sansom. This is the third in the Matthew Shardlake um, Tudor Mystery Series, and I cannot wait to continue on this. And I'm going to be reading it with Julie from Hungry Bookworm, and it's going to be such a delight to read with her, and I'm really excited to read this very pacey mystery series. Then next is The Mother of the Brontes by Sharon Wright. Um, so I am really excited. This is the first uh, book in the Fierce Women Reads book club that I'm hosting with Melina and Naomi. I will link their channels down below and it's going to be really interesting to read this and learn more about uh, the member of the Bronte family that I would say we know the least about. And next on the list is The Odyssey. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am just adding on The Odyssey to this month. So a little bit of context for those of you that have seen my Global Classics TBR, The Iliad was on that list. I was telling my dad about my project and how I was really excited to read The Iliad. He's like, Kate, you have to start with The Odyssey. But I was like, isn't The Odyssey a sequel to The Iliad? He's like, I don't care. You have to start with The Odyssey. He was adamant about it. So I am st I'm taking his advice. I want to, you know, start off this year strong. And so maybe The Iliad will be next year, but I'm going to try for The Odyssey. I did try a few years ago, but I was trying to coordinate and listen to it with my husband. And that's a very long audiobook to coordinate with someone else's schedule. So I am sticking to just the text because my dad recommended highly the Robert Fagley um, translation, and I could not find the audiobook like through my library. And I don't want to buy that audiobook yet because I don't know if I'll like it. Uh, so I will just be sticking to the physical copy through the library. And um, I'm hoping I really like this. It's just such a, you know, part of our culture, uh, such a part of the history of storytelling. It's just, I feel a lot of pressure <laughs> um, to like this. So hopefully I will. And then The Scarlet Letter and Adam Bede. 
I am reading both of these for my um, the Ebenezer Maxwell Mansions Literary Parlor. If you would like to join us, we will be meeting um, and on Zoom, so virtually. I'm really excited to revisit Adam Bede. I don't know how I feel about rereading The Scarlet Letter because I know that High School Kate really liked The Scarlet Letter, so I am a bit worried it won't live up to my expectations, but I'm hoping that it does, and um, yes, hopefully it will. Then I am reading A Light in the Window by Jen Karen. This is the second in the Mitford series, and I am hosting A Year in Mitford with Chelsea from Voyage of a Time Wanderer, uh, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, and Angie from Literary Labors. I cannot tell you what like a beacon of joy um, at home in Mitford was for me starting out the reading year in January. So I'm very eager to continue and see what happens to all of these characters that I came to love so much in my, you know, read last year of at home in Mitford and my reread this year. Can't wait to continue on with A Light in the Window. And Goodreads didn't give me much of an idea of what it's about, uh, but I just know it's about the citizen, citizens of Mitford who live in this really small, um, small town in North Carolina, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to them next and meeting some new characters. And uh, then I will be continuing on with The Eighth Life. <laughs> I'm hoping to finish this by the end of February. All, honestly, it's pretty modest. All I have to do is read 20 pages a day because I've been reading a fair chunk um, in the month of January. So if I keep up with this um, in January, then I will have read uh, around 400 pages. So that gives me a really good head start. And I'm buddy reading this with a subscriber, Emily Kate. Um, so I'm looking forward to discussing it with her. And um, yeah, so far, so good. But it is really, it's it's bad times. <laughs> it's it's getting really intense. Um, so hopefully I'm just gonna gonna brace myself. This, okay, you know, this set during the Russian Revolution colliding with me reading, uh, with me watching the Korean drama Mr. Sunshine about the Japanese occupation of Korea. Oh, my heart, my heart will be in shreds by the time I finish this and Mr. Sunshine. So oh, I just, you know, I'm gonna need all the uplifting things after that. So it's good. I will have, you know, some romances in February to kind of, sweeten, <laughs> sweeten things up. Um, but I really, The Eighth Life, I mean, I think it's a masterpiece. Um, I should, I should hold it up again. I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's going to be a favorite book of the year, but it's a lot. It's a lot. So those are the books that I am hoping to read in the month of February. Please let me know if you are reading anything in honor of Valentine's Day or in honor of the last month last full month of winter, and I will be back for another video soon. Bye.